Am I the only one constantly seeing ads like these from financial services companies? Mike found himself all teed up for a big job in finance. It appears the bulls are running. This is an opportunity. I reward him. That's a wake up call. I think we should move you into our new fund. Sure. Okay. It seems like there's a buzz about how to manage your money correctly. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about, first of all, how to have money. Then once you do, what you should be doing with it. I'll even give you some insights on how I make my money work for me instead of me working for money. Stick around. First things first, you need to have money to be able to manage it. I am a son of immigrants. Growing up, my dad would always say that in the US, it's easy to make money, but it's very hard to have money. I didn't really understand the difference until I hit my early 30s. Now that I understand the concept of assets versus cash, I'm much more inclined to save and invest and not just to throw away cash flow. The only surefire way of having money is to save. Start saving now, better yet, jump into a time machine and start saving 10 years ago. This is crucial. Don't spend any money whatsoever. Pay your rent, your utilities, eat, buy some clothes, and that is it. Every time you go out to a restaurant or a bar and spend a hundred bucks, bear in mind that you're actually spending on average $2,500. That 100 could have been 2,500 if you had saved for your retirement. It's a mindset issue. Now, every time I close a tab at a bar, I will think, well, there goes $2,500 down the drain. You have to start thinking about every dollar you get as a potential asset, but once you spend it, it just becomes cash flow. It's estimated that if you save 50% of your income, you can reach financial independence. And if you're really lucky, you can retire 15 years from now. Take Chris Raining. He's an average Joe employee in the IT sector. His income was nothing too spectacular, but he was able to live a very modest lifestyle and he saved 50% of his income. He retired at the age of 37 with over $1 million in the bank. Another awesome example is our favorite YouTube star, Mr. Beast. In a recent interview, he mentioned that until a couple of months ago, he lived in a $500 a month, very modest apartment. He had to move recently because of security issues, somebody broke into his house. Otherwise, he was very happy where he was. Now, I understand that the Chris Raining example is a bit extreme. Not all of us can save 50% of our income and retire at 37, but the moral of the story is still true. Save as much as you can now, live below your means. Don't upgrade your car, don't go out and be prudent with your cash flow so you can convert cash into assets. A tip from my side here, start saving in your early 20s. I've been working since I was 16. I started waiting tables for some extra cash. And once I had my first full-time job, I moved out of the house and started living my journey. In my 20s, saving money was super easy. All I had to do was pay rent for a small studio apartment, utilities were close to nothing, and I didn't go out much. If I wanted to hang out with my friends, I would usually invite them over and they would bring their own beer. I was able to save about 30 to 40% of my income. Now in my late 30s, I have a wife, two kids, a bigger house, a car, etc. My expenses have gone up significantly. So understandably, my ability to save money is not what it was used to be. Start saving as soon as you can. The longer you wait, the harder it will become. Here are some realistic numbers so you can understand how achievable $1 million is when you retire. If you save only 300 bucks a month for the next 30 years, and if you add the compound interest rate, you will have a million dollars in your bank account when you retire. That means if you're 25 now, you'll have a million bucks in your bank account when you're 55. And that's only if you invest your money very conservatively almost risk-free. If you're more aggressive with your investments or you start saving more than 300 bucks a month, the sky is the limit. Okay, now that we have covered how to have money, let's talk a bit about how you make your money work for you, converting your cash flow and savings into assets. All right, before I forget, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. It only takes one second from you, but it means the world to us. Go ahead, hit the button now.
It seems like everybody I know and probably everybody you know thinks they have the best investment plan. You should meet my money guy. I have a better money guy. My money guy got me in early at Apple stock. Commodities, annuities, bonds, Bitcoin. Everybody is a financial guru these days. I'm not a financial guru, far, far from it, but I do have a master's degree in finance. And I can tell you that most of the people are saying is bullshit. If it seems too good to be true, then it is. There is no easy money. There's no magic wand. Let's take a closer look at these so-called money guys. Money guys in the real world are called financial advisors, wealth managers, financial consultants, and so on. These titles don't mean shit. The title itself is not proof that your money guy knows what the hell he's talking about. And that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that these types of people work off of commission. They can take a percentage of the wealth you create. This means that your relationship with your money guy has a built-in conflict of interest. The money guy is looking out for his or her own interests and not yours. If you put your money into an annuity, they will make a shit ton of commission from it. But annuities are very complex financial instruments that are only necessary in a very, very small amount of cases, which most likely means you don't need it, but your money guy does. Another problem you're going to face with money guys is compound interest. Now, compound interest is always communicated as an awesome and great thing. It basically means the interest comes on top of the interest, which means your money grows exponentially hockey stick. The problem is that the money guy's commission is also compounded. So you are paying more and more as your money grows. For example, if you put your money in a 401k retirement fund that gives you 7% annual for the next 50 years, if the financial guy takes 2% of that as fees, at the end of those 50 years, you will be giving out two thirds of your earnings. Two thirds. I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to give away two thirds of my retirement to anyone except maybe my kids. What about the funds themselves? Our retirement funds safe. Well, there are two types of retirement funds you can choose from. A low fee index fund, which is basically means your money is simply trying to match the performance of the total market. If the market goes up 5%, you'll get a 5% return. Then there's a high fee actively managed fund. This is the case where you have someone investing your money and trying to beat the market to get higher returns than the average of the total market. Of course, the problem here is that there's no guarantee that they can beat the market. I'll go even so far as to say a lot of the times this is complete crap. Some years back, they held a competition between a team of high-end money managers at esteemed financial institutions against a cat named Orlando. Each was given the same amount of money to invest in stocks for a year. The money managers were run their so-called financial analysis models trying to figure out undervalued stock bear bull strategy. Orlando the cat would throw a toy mouse on a grid of paper. At the end of the year, the money manager's portfolio was up 3.5% versus Orlando's portfolio, which was up 11%. The cat probably charges fewer fees as well, so you're better off throwing a dart to pick a stock. Most money managers themselves keep their own money in low index funds. So to recap, to have money, you need to save up as much as possible as soon as possible. And don't get caught up in whatever the money guy is advising you to do. They might be in it to benefit themselves. So what should you do with your money? Well, here's what I do. I break down my portfolio into three main categories. Low risk, low reward, medium risk, medium reward, and high risk, high reward. 80% of my assets tend to be in the low risk, low reward portfolio. This includes my kids' college funds, their savings accounts. I have some money in my 401k that is invested in index funds. That means it's invested into the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, or the NASDAQ Composite. I also have some CDs in the bank. CDs are certificates of deposit. Basically, the bank freezes that amount of money for a certain period of time and gives me a higher interest rate. But the catch is I can't touch the money for that period of time. This is not the high highest yielding financial instrument, but it is one of the safest. Now with inflation soaring and the Fed boosting interest rates, CD rates have also dramatically increased, so safe bet. Last but not least, government bonds. Lending money to the government has its perks. For example, it's tax exempt, and it's a fair bet that the government will be able to pay back the debt. 
Once again, 80% of my investments go into this low risk, low reward strategy. So out of every 100 bucks I save, 80 goes into one of these accounts. I started with 100% of my savings going here, but as the portfolio grew and I became more financially independent, I started diversifying into some more risky investments. If you're just starting out, index funds are definitely your best bet, then government bonds, then the rest. My medium risk, medium reward portfolio includes real estate. I have both commercial and residential real estate as an investment. Buy to rent is the safest bet here. You put a 20% down payment on a house or an apartment and you rent it out. The rent should cover the mortgage payments. So you're banking on the market going up so you can get capital gain. Even if it doesn't, you should be able to pay off your mortgage in 20 years or so and you end up with a clean asset, the house itself. I know a lot of people say real estate is low risk, Ultimately, the prices will always go up and so on. But the reason I put real estate investments into medium risk category is that time is a crucial factor. If you put money into real estate and don't touch it for the long term, 15 years or more, then it's almost always profitable. But if at any point in time in those 15 years, you need cash now and you're forced to sell, you can lose a ton of money. Real estate is a fire and forget type of investment. You might not have a huge returns until you retire or even hand it over to your kids as assets. Medium risk is also investing into the company I own, investing into my own company or my own startup. Uh, this is very risky overall, but I don't consider it high risk because I'm part of the management of the company I'm investing into. So that mitigates some of the risks. Ultimately, I'm getting a salary from that company and I have some level of control over how the money is being spent. I put about 15% of my savings in this medium risk, medium reward strategy. The last 5% of my savings goes into high risk, high reward category. This includes any type of cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin. I started trading crypto with Binance, but quickly realized the massive risks involved. For all the crypto maniacs out there, please don't send me angry emails over this. Although Bitcoin has merit as a financial asset, there is so much speculatory trading going on that's still a very high risk move. I only put money into crypto that I'm willing to lose without any significant financial fallout. I just recently got into angel investing in startups as well. This is also a high risk investment. The idea here is you put 5,000 bucks into five different startups at a super early stage. And if one of them takes off, you get all of your investment back and then some. The expectation I have here at least is 20 to 100 times the initial investment. But then again, none of it might come back. That's why it's high risk. Same goes for any type of stock. If you made it this far, let me know how you invest your money. I would love to learn what is in your secret sauce. That's it for today. See you next week.